spring. Everything around begins to bloom and Mother Nature comes alive. But if you depend on Mother Nature for food, quite often you have no time to admire her beauty. You must plow, sow and fertilize, so in the autumn you can gather enough food to last all winter. Narco! Go get everybody! Tell them we're ready to plow the vegetable garden! What for? What do you mean, what for? So that we can plant the seeds! What for? Don't you know any other words? We all have to get ready for the harvest! We no. don't need that anymore! Because now, we live on the sun's rays! Only sun and Indian tea. Indian tea, Indian tea, everybody loves Indian tea. What's Indian tea? It's the sun's rays that give energy to all. I will soon be filled with glorious strength, much like a solar-powered battery. The only things I need are some vitamins, and they are all right here in this Indian tea. So now we all take a gulp. <sighs> and we don't need anything else. Except for a small piece of chocolate cake. Attention, people. Those who are not ready to be freed from the temptations of chocolate cake, banana cream pie, marshmallow s'mores, and other similar scourges can spend their lives alone with the evil of food. Hey, guys! If we miss the planting now, then when the fall arrives, our barns will be empty. We won't have any food to eat. Keep absorbing the sun's rays. I'll be right back. My friend, like you, I was once consumed by illusions and fears and obsessed with all the material pleasures in life. But one night I was watching a DVD. It was a beautiful movie from India, and I saw the light. But... Did you know Indians only grow tea? And they live in harmony. They spend the day dancing and singing songs. Everybody's happy and very content. Eh? So wonderful. You know why? Because they live on the sun and drink tea. Give me a piece of cake. I'm so hungry, I'm starting to see spots. This is a good sign, my dear. Have a little patience, and you'll experience a condition where you'll feel the most extraordinary levity. You'll forever free yourself from the burden of cakes, bagels, and pastries. Mm. Tea now! How do you feel, Rosa? Before I forever leave this world of illusion, there is something I must do. I feel the need to dance! Uh -huh. Gimme, 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 gimme more tea! Try, 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 try. Gimme, gimme, gimme so that I can be free. While my stomach's screaming at me, I will just be dreaming of tea. I would love a little Danish. How about a bite of Cornish? I'm so hungry. Won't you feed me? <laughs> oh, my love, your breath is like the wind blowing through a pomegranate tree. Your steps are no heavier than the whipped cream on a strawberry shortcake. Your lips are brighter than a cherry tart. My heart trembles like an empty fridge when you look at me. And when I see you, I forget everything that matters. I forget that I'm hungry. Carrot cake or coffee cake, even if it's lobster bake, I'm so hungry. Won't you feed me? Uh, winter's here. But what about the harvest? Oh. Did he pass out from hunger? 
No, he's just hibernating. He'll wake up next spring. Barry's really lucky he doesn't need to eat anything. He'll just suck on his paw. So what about us, Daco? Uh, this system works for India because it's always sunny. <laughs> Over there, they don't need to worry about winter time, storm clouds, snow. They have elephants to carry things. Oh, look! <sighs> Barry looks like he's smiling. Maybe he's dreaming of something delicious. No, he looks very happy. He's singing. <laughs> He's dreaming of India. Maybe we should eat him. No way. Why should I be nervous? Ha! Makes sense. No reason to worry if you haven't got a chance. On your marks? Get set? <laughs> <laughs> Thought I'd give him a head start. It's the nice thing to do after all. Gotta even the playing field for these poor chumps. <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> Looking good, Wally. Not a bad date for someone with four left hooves. Nice weather we're having, huh? Well, I should be off. Later, Wall. Good determination. You'll look good with that silver medal soon. See you at the finish line. Huh? Come on! <laughs> Easy. Oh, hail your champion, the unbeatable. Holy carrots! How is it possible? It can't be true. Hedgehogs can't outrun rabbits. Wait a sec. Uh, nope, still awake. On your marks? So, you nervous about the race? No. Why would I be nervous? <laughs> no. Chico's been cheating. Best friend, want to try a round of ping pong? Hey, you're not bad at this. Almost like you're a completely new hedgehog. Why, thank you. Surely you have some kind of secret. I sure do. Which is? A special diet. I knew it. What do you eat? I eat the competition, smoked rabbit. Get it? Ha! Good one. Hey, I'm just joking. Everyone loses sometimes. No, it's not the losing I mind. I like playing fairly, without any cheating mechanisms. Hmm. Hmm. Listen, I know you wanted to beat me bad. I'm pretty impressive. So badly you wanted to turn to nefarious methods. I get it. But that kind of trick? That's some pretty shady stuff. It's not right to keep secrets like that from friends. I didn't realize. Do you want some? What? For me? Are you crazy? No way, no! I am a champion! Hmm. Hmm. Fine, don't admit that you have a problem, but know this! You can't fool everyone else. Hmm. Nothing like a smear campaign to let everyone know who the real winner is. I'll show everyone he's a fraud. This is for your own good, Chico. Go, 
to win races should be the fastest and fastest alone, not the best at cheating. Dangerous energy drinks should be banned, especially in good, honest races. And if anyone here has a problem, we won't shame him. Well, maybe just a little bit. I mean, we'll check him on his winning title and give it to me, but no shaming. Just admit it. Yeah, he's right, I think. The culprit, please confess. Holy carrots, you really don't know who I'm talking about? Him! It's Chico cheating! Look at him! He's drinking it as we speak! Huh? Huh? Um, this is a carton of milk. Wanna see? Mm-hmm. He's right. It's 1% milk. So what's the other 99%? Uh, uh, uh. I'm sorry, Chico. I just wanted to win so bad. <sighs> Chico, I never should have accused you like that. Even though I still don't understand what's in the other 99% of milk. Do you forgive me? Please say you do. Don't worry, friend. It's all fine. And it's kind of like a trick. Uh, how's that? One could say you were almost right. No, no, no. Well, no, milk no. is so full of nutrients, it can help you win. It's full of protein, which helps build muscle mass, and helps make your body stronger and stuff. And, uh, uh, well, uh, it has uh, vitamins and minerals, uh, and it's healthy. So uh, it's kind of like a magic potion. You uh, think so? Uh, <laughs> uh, <Ooh. laughs> I finally got you to admit it, you sneaky cheater. You use the protein in milk to get superpowered. I'm on to you, buddy. <laughs> Wally, come to me. Come here now. Come and chat with me. <clears throat> huh? Tell me the truth. Are you sure it's here? I'm sure. That's the tree. <clears throat> What exactly are you looking for? This past fall, Crash buried a can of carrot juice, but now he can't seem to find it. Hmm. But why would he bury it? Sounds weird to me. So that it could age better. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> All right, found it. <clears throat> Yay! <Huh>? Keep pulling. <clears throat> okay, try holding on to me. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Whoa! Won't come off! Huh. Huh? What is that? Huh. Uh, 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 wow, check it out! <laughs> so cool! <laughs> you know it's probably just... Hey, wait! What did you guys find? Wait for me! What is that? But of course. Hey, what gives? Uh, what you found is a magnet. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> Magnets have the ability to attract other objects to themselves. Yeah, my can. A typical tin can? Yes, a magnet would be effective. Who cares about a tin can? Huh? Huh. Can a magnet attract a companion? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, goodness me! Magnetism is a natural phenomenon that happens. Great! Right. I'll take that. Oh, oh. Wait a minute, Rosa. We found it. But oh. you don't even need it. Oh. You two are magnetized enough as it is. <laughs> it's impossible to separate you two. Wait! Come back. Now. Time to attract Wally. Become attracted. Huh? Oh, I guess that's too far for the magnet. Nah, we shouldn't have let Rosa take that magnet. If we had it, we'd have found that can by now. Yes, but are you absolutely positive you buried it in the first place? We've dug up everywhere like a pair of moles. You don't believe me, do you? Huh, well, that's fine. I'll find it by myself. I'll get more that way. If that's... Then go ahead. 
<laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm wondering if you're maybe feeling anything special. Just what should I feel? Do you feel it? You don't know? Attraction, of course! Uh, what's happening? Uh, why are those things moving on their own? Do you think you can lend me the magnet for a while? I'm afraid Crash and I got demagnetized. Sure. I'm through with this magnet. It's useless. It doesn't attract anything not made out of metal. Keep in mind, magnets don't only attract each other, for if we reverse the polarities, they can repel each other, too. <laughs> but isn't that only true for metal stuff? Nope. It's one of the laws of nature. You see, all things that can be attracted can also be repelled should their polarities become reversed. That is, if they're turned the wrong way. So, if the magnet used to attract things, but then it began to repel them instead, then that has got to mean that the magnet was somehow turned the wrong way. Hey, have any of you seen my can? It was kind of yellowish. Rosa, huh? I did feel something unusual. Really? Yes. What? <laughs> I feel upset and confused by the sudden disappearance of every one of my dishes! <sighs> oh, well. Please tell us what we need to do to reverse the polarity of our magnets so they're not turned the wrong way and they never repel again. Changing the pole of a magnet is a risky experiment. Your commitment must be 100%. But you all seem committed to each other, so perhaps we'll have some luck. And not only survive the experiment, but succeed in being attracted again. Crash, if your stubborn magnet turned over, I think mine will have too. just as incredibly as I do, then next time we should be able to make it all the way to Barry's house. Chico, make sure you take quick, small steps when you're running. Did you ever think that if we were both pushing, maybe we could go further? How do you expect me to push? I have to put all my concentration into steering. <laughs> Hooligans, don't you see that ruined my perfect picket fence? I picked those pickets one picket at a time. What am I going to do now? In Bob slang, it's all about the push. The harder you push, the further you go. Just push it! <laughs> Everybody laugh. <laughs> 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 
did it! Did you see the part when we were going down the hill? This is outrageous! Uh, so can I come do it with you? Sorry, we got a full team. And I do appreciate the new window, but maybe ask me first next time. Our feet won't slip on the ice, so we'll be able to push our bobsleigh even faster. Hmm? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 But you have to admit that this time we were able to go a lot further. I don't think there's any way we could make it to Pin's house. Not just with the two of us pushing, you know. Don't worry, we'll make it. Crash, if you want to have fun, go right on your own. We're practicing the bobsleigh. It's a serious business. Oh. Hmm. Well, then maybe uh, we should see how far we can go with all three hey. of us pushing. Oh, yeah? Well, fine. <laughs> you have a new pilot now, and I'm going to join the other team. But, Crash, that was your house. Uh, well, what can I do? Bobslaying is serious business. Ah! Ah! Whoa, they are flying! They tilt too much when they round the curves. <laughs> um, maybe, uh, <laughs> we should all team up, huh? tell you that I'm not talking to you either, but I'm not talking to you. Are you still fighting? Sometimes she is so stubborn. Guess that's a yes. She goes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta help me out. I want you to go to her, and you're gonna tell her, tell her 
She makes me so angry! Go tell her yourself! Well, I would, but we're not talking to each other anymore. Chico, listen. Do this for me! Please! Hey! Don't worry, Crash. I'll go tell her and come right back. Phooey. <laughs> What's taking so long? I told her. I told her. And she said she's changing her middle name to Angry because of how angry you make her. Then give her this message. Huh? Tell no. her. No hmm? more. He's not your personal messenger. He'll just get tired out and won't be able to carry me home later when he loses the game. How do you know I'm going to carry you home? I might just win, you know. That's right, Chico. You tell him. It's like, he doesn't show you any respect. As a matter of fact, if I were in your shoes, I wouldn't talk to him. Yeah, Polly's right. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I'm not talking to you either. You're just afraid of losing, and you're trying to weasel your way out of playing the game. <laughs> Ask him who he's talking to, because besides not talking to him, I'm not listening to him either, so there. Uh, well, uh... Chico says that... Tell him if he thinks I can't hear him, then he's gonna screw loose upstairs. He won't play because he's afraid his brain will fall out. He thinks my brain is loose? That's the last straw. <laughs> you tell him that I... Chico, <laughs> did you tell Wally exactly what I told you? Hold your horses. You tell him Chico, I... why are you yelling at me? You're making me very angry, so I'm not talking to you, either one of you. Actually, I'm not talking to any of you. Huh? What are you guys doing? Playing a game or something? Barry, would you be so kind as to tell Wally to tell Chico... Uh, no, that's too complicated. Forget about all that. Uh, just tell Chico. If he's not really chicken, he'll play with me. Then if he wants to sit there all alone, even better. Wait a minute. You guys aren't talking to each other? All of you? <laughs> well, ain't that a stinger? <laughs> no one's talking. <laughs> it's peace and quiet without the peace part. <laughs> Cat got your tongue? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's so funny? <laughs> Barry, you're making me very angry right now. Listen, Carla, he, let's go. You have to talk to them. You gotta tell them it's not their fault. I have a lot of things I gotta do. I just can't waste any more time not talking to them. Maybe they'll listen to you. Ooh, what a bizarre nightmare. Chico, you have to do me a favor. You need to talk to Barry and tell him that if someone makes you mad, you can't just give them the silent treatment. It's not healthy for a relationship. You have to talk things over, discuss, try to get along with each other. Apologize eventually. That's what's most important, to talk. 
Yeah, okay, but first, tell the creature sitting on my back that I agreed to carry him from the ping pong table to his house, and as far as getting from his house to Barry's place, he's gonna have to walk on his own two feet. gonna do? You've dragged me out to this swing five times now, and then sit silently for hours like I'm not even here! <sighs> yeah, I'm looking at the mountains. It's wonderful that you're looking at the mountains, but what do I have to do with it? Honestly, I can't figure that out myself. When I look at the mountains by myself, I don't know. There's nothing special about them. But if I put someone like you sitting next to me, the mountains... well... They suddenly become... mountains! Okay, you look at the mountains if you find it interesting. But I should do something interesting, too. Let me see... Like, eat candies? So the next time you have the urge to... Look at the mountains, bring candies! Mountains for you, candies for me. Agreed? Okay, ciao, Wally! See ya! Enough for today. Wally, oi, don't bring any candies with white filling anymore. <gasps> These mountains are going to be the end of me. This is no way to live. It's endless torment. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, you see, Olga, he wants to enjoy mountains, and I have to suffer. I'm supposed to transform his mountains to mountains. Do you? I think that it's easy. Uh, it takes away from my spiritual energy. Uh, I can't stand it. Uh. Hi, Rosa. You are eating far too many sweet things. Your entire system is polluted with sweets. No candies for two weeks. <laughs> Understand? <gasps> oh, yes! <gasps> it all makes so much sense! Why must I be forced to suffer? That's it! No more mountains! <laughs> Mountain lovers, do not disturb. Come on in. Wally, I've come to tell you, from this moment on, you'll be looking at the mountains without me. Yeah, I know. Hmm? What does that mean? You see, I've run out of candies, and not everyone likes looking at the mountains without them. Of course! Every girl should appreciate herself and the wondrous effect she has on the mountains. And those that don't... Appreciate that effect, can enjoy the mountains! Alone! Au revoir! It's not all about the candies, especially because it's not okay to eat so many! If I have a talent for turning mountains into... Mountains? 
It shouldn't be squandered for nothing. And everyone should appreciate it. They should realize how important it is so that mountains should be mountains. And the sky, the sky. <sighs> so they shouldn't think it's all just nonsense. <laughs> or if they want to see mountains, that they can whistle for me. <laughs> and I'm there. Nope. Come on in! You won't believe it! There was a knock and... And, well, these are for you. Of course, I understand it's all utter nonsense, but... But maybe it's a wonderful day, beautiful weather, and... Will you come look at the mountains, huh? Oh, I don't know. I have so many things to do! <sighs> All right, smart guy, your turn! <laughs> <laughs> Another for me. How could I lose this badly? <laughs> I guess my luck is all run out. Get over it, Carlin. <laughs> it's not like you win every time. I've been unlucky all day. Dave! <laughs> 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 Huh? Oh, come on! <laughs> After lunch, I tried to turn my luck around with some mushroom picking. when the real problems would begin. Checkmate! Sorry! It looks like this whole day is a checkmate. <sighs> Nah, there's no such thing as luck. There is! Let me explain. Bad luck has been stuck to me all day. No matter what I do, everything's gone wrong. I've never had a day like this. Look, you see? You're crazy. That just happens. But never like this, I'm telling you. The only conclusion is that today is cursed. Ha! Let's figure this out then. <laughs> okay, pick a paw, any paw. Okay, you write one. Too bad. <laughs> Listen, Carlin. I got myself a theory. If you have bad luck, everyone around you should be having good luck. Because you'll be attracting all the bad luck. In the same way bees are attracted to honey. But how does that help me? Well, it, it doesn't. But you could be useful to everyone else. You don't say. Poof. Let me put this to the test. <laughs> Pen crafted this just for me, so I can do all my beekeeping without ever getting stung. Um, Problem is, when I'm wearing it, I'm so well protected, I can't collect any honey. And? And you're gonna wear this and wait for the bees to come, and I'll stroll around the bees. And we'll test who the bees end up stinging. <laughs> Sound good? It sounds great! No need to worry about your dumb old bad luck. When you're in this thing, you'll be so safe and super protected. Ready? Mm. Ready. <laughs> 
All right. Looks good, spaceman. <laughs> Let's be off. Time to get some honey, bunny. Hope I don't get stung. safe in here, I'm safe in here, I'm safe in here. I'm <laughs> totally safe from the bees. I'm totally safe from... I didn't know the suit had a pantsless option. That'd be nice for the summer. Wait a second. What's wrong? Get that guy. Go there, you, you understand, don't you? <laughs> it's not like you need all that honey. I'm just doing maintenance, really. <laughs> you don't understand. It's not really not what it looks like. Yeah! <sighs> this time the bees got the best of us both. Big time. Bees where? What bees? Stop! No more! Looks like we were both wrong, and bad luck is contagious. Oh, that's not true. Let's go. I'll walk out with you. You're right. Bad luck really is a truly fickle thing. I told you so. At least the weather's finally nice. That's one thing that... When this is done, and our bad luck finally runs out, maybe we'll get an equal amount of good luck. Maybe you're right, but I still believe in making my own luck, you know? You cultivate it in the same way you, you do honey. I guess you have a point, as long as there are no more bees involved. Another day with no inspiration. Each passing hour, a reflection of my inability to create poetic, uh, stuff. Some days, all you can do is give up, mope around, and hope inspiration comes knocking on your front door. Wally! Come play outside with us! It's beautiful! I'm good. You don't look like you're good, Wall. Leave me be. I'm not a bee, silly. I'll stay here. Just leave me alone. Where's the fun in that? Oh, come on! Move that woolly behind! There's only so many hours of daylight left! Let's play ball! Not right now. I'm very... busy. You don't seem busy. I am! You don't understand. I need to find inspiration. My poems won't write themselves. And I can't be disturbed until I'm done. We should have tried harder to get him to play. I don't know. He seems pretty troubled. Maybe this inspiration is a big problem. Nah, I think his only trouble is he doesn't get outside enough. What's the big deal? Maybe he could write better if he took a break. I think you've got a point there. They say a bit of fresh air can do wonders to inspire you. Wally out, so we need a better plan. Luckily, I'm creative. As creative as... Uh, something. If he won't go get some fresh air, we'll take the fresh air to him. Ooh. Nice. Ah, now that's 
some clean air. You collect some of this stuff while I go over there and try some of that. I'm hard at work. How's it going? So we wanted, um, to help. Please enjoy this breath of fresh air. Hope that helps. You do your thing. We'll leave you alone. Oh. Times outside. Another dose of freshness. This new mm. batch came from the stream. Mm. Well, the air around it, not the water, of course. No need to thank us. Anything to help out with a friend's inspiration. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tad ambitious. I see you guys will go to any lengths to find your fresh air. What do you say I help you guys look for some? Hmm? not eat purely for instant gratification. There is a whole ritual to it. There's a philosophy behind it as well as an attitude towards life. Tell me what and how you eat and I will tell you who you are. I don't get it. What's wrong with carrots? My friend, the problem is not with the carrots. Carrots are pure and innocent. The problem is you. Or rather, the problem lies in the way you have a habit of eating them. You've just dug them up and are about to mindlessly devour them. I rubbed the dirt off. And what of that? I'm hungry. I want to eat. And what of that? I like to eat when I'm hungry. You must fight that impulse. Only wild animals eat that way, digging something up and tossing it down. You are a civilized animal and should understand the art of cooking. <laughs> Listen closely. In order to prepare just the right dish, the first step, of course, is to select just the right ingredients. No. Hmm. <sighs> Everyone knows this already. 
Let's skip to the part where we ate them. The second step, as a rule, is to not only wash the ingredients, but to peel them as well with a sharp blade. You carefully remove the peel, like so. Of course, before you can begin, you must figure out exactly what you want to cook. Here's the thing I'm struggling to understand. I wash and peel them. At that point, why can't I eat them? Well, when a dish contains an assortment of ingredients, its taste becomes more sophisticated, richer, and yet more incomprehensible. It's crucial that the vegetables not be carelessly thrown into a pile. Our ingredients are the foundation of the dish that we will be creating. Therefore, there must be symmetry as well as balance. For example, red carrots go quite well with a ripe yellow pineapple, a crispy green cucumber, just a hint of overripe orange, pumpkin pulp, and, last but not least, a drizzle of amber mm. honey. Yeah. Oh. Any of those. In most cases, ingredients should be cut up into small pieces, making them not only convenient for eating, but also, and perhaps more importantly, appealing to the eye. As you can see, our ingredients are now marinating in the delicious juice from our freshly cut vegetables. Uh, yeah, yeah, it looks delicious. Let's eat already. The next step, of course, is the application of heat. There are many options to choose from. One could boil or fry, one could use dry heat or bake, and those more skilled could even saute. <laughs> Normally, it depends on the cookware generously provided by our sponsor. We're in luck today! As you can see, we could fry or we could boil, and with this and my skills, we could even saute! And your luck doesn't end there, for I'm going to share one of my secrets! If you cook something over low heat, it will cook rather slowly, and on high heat, it cooks quickly! There's no point in sitting here while the food cooks. Uh, so let's go out and walk up an appetite. Mine's already been walked up. We waited long enough. Let's eat now. You've been inside breathing in cooking fumes too long, my friend. Now you need to what breathe you need some talking fresh about air. What oxygen. Fill your lungs what with air? oxygen Don't so that you can work up a healthy and hearty air. appetite. Salt is everything. Success in cooking requires using just the right amount. Uh, pfft, it's actually sugar. It'll be fine. And now, presenting the feast! <laughs> Knowing how to serve mm. is also important. A dish should not only taste delicious, it should also look delicious and be presented in an inviting manner. Mm. <laughs> Hey, do you mind? Can, can I have this? Because I just have. Well, in my opinion, something seems to be missing. Maybe a sauce or something. It's an appetite. All one needs to appreciate cooking is an all consuming appetite. Um, are you going to eat that? <sighs> well, who likes some more milk? I do. <laughs> Disgusting. Yuck. 
Come on, Crash. How do you know milk is disgusting? <laughs> You've never even tried it. You don't have to try something gross and disgusting to know it's gross and disgusting. Rosa hates caterpillars. You don't see her trying to eat one. <coughs> There's nothing disgusting about it. <laughs> and it's very healthy. Take it from me. Why should I? How do you know it's healthy? Hmm. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Oh, yeah? Everybody knows that? But how do they know? I mean, where are the facts? Where are the findings? Where's the research? Where's the solid proof, huh? Does anybody know who's really benefited from it? How do we know it's not some big scam? Absolutely preposterous. My intuition tells me it's a ripoff. Hmm. And my intuition's never failed me. Like that time you tried to prove that poison ivy wasn't poison? Or when we went to the pond that day and you tried to prove that snapping turtles don't really snap? Or that time you tried to disprove concussions and you got one. <laughs> All right, I'll make you a bet. Is it a deal? I'll bet you a carrot. Now, a special investigative report. Is the milk we drink every day a cool, delicious, bone-building beverage that's great with a plate of chocolate chip cookies? Or is it secretly a poison? We intend to find out on Investigation Crash. So, I intend to drink a glass of whole milk every day for the next week while closely monitoring my general health and well-being. This will not be easy for me, but I will do it in the interests of science. You mean in the interests of carrots? <laughs> we'll edit that out in post. Where was I? <laughs> and now, my first glass of milk. I'm not sure what will happen after this courageous experiment, but we'll know soon enough. <laughs> Seriously? Come on, pal, it's called a cliffhanger. Welcome to day three of our investigative report. Still no idea what its effects are. Is it building strong bones, or is it slowly gnawing away at my insides? Mm, yum, yum, yum. Give me another one of these, will ya? Cause now it's time to test the effects of my coordination. Can we cut that one out? <laughs> that was just a bad throw. Well, here we are on day ten. We're in the laboratory. We're about to see if the milk has had any effect. Inhale. Exhale. Well, there has been no deterioration of health that I can see. And as a matter of fact, if anything, there's been a bit of improvement since last time. That's impossible. Ah! Huh? We interrupt our investigative report to bring you this breaking story. Would you mind telling our viewers exactly what happened to you? Do I have to? We still rolling? Spill it! Uh, well, um, I, uh, um... Yeah? I, I climbed up on a shelf to grab some ink and... Okay, right. uh, and then I slipped. Uh, yeah? Uh, and then a bottle fell off the shelf and hit me on the... <laughs> on the head. And can you tell our viewers what was in that bottle? Well, it was milk. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> it was milk! Proof oh. that milk is not only disgusting, but a leading cause of life-threatening head injuries! But that's not really... It's an inconvenient truth! <laughs> Wally's injury is but one illustration of the dangerous effects of milk on an unsuspecting public. And if there are still any doubts as to its deleterious effects, I am here by increasing my dosage of Satan syrup to two cartons a day. And please remember, I am a professional. <laughs> This is a farce. When are you going to admit that you like it? There's nothing disgusting about it, and it's good for you. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe I've got more pop in my hop. Maybe I've grown a little. But how do I know these aren't the initial symptoms of some horrible disease? Shoot it yourself. I'm finished. I'm gonna have some milk. Chocolate. <laughs> Thank you.
Cool. Investigation crash day 12. We're continuing our investigative report into the effects of milk on the body. But we're taking it in a different direction. Our incisive report is now about its positive effects. And just like always, your old faithful reporter is dedicated to the truth.